buddy. Where you headed? Hamilton Lumber Company, Camp 6. What are they paying you? Why, uh, 16 pounds. Carson's offering 75. What are you doing, kidding? There ain't that much money in the world. Try me and see. Well, what do you say, boys? Waters, my name, Bucky Waters. Bill Corwin. What's your name? Bruce Corrigan. Give me a ticket. Wait a minute. Not so fast. What do you mean? You're not standing up? How'd you guess it? Don't be a boo. Hey, what's going on here? You can't do this. I've already signed these men. That's too bad. I'm re-signing them. Wait a minute. What about my commission? Don't bother me. Now, oh, what's wrong with you? Why, a couple of things. First of all, I don't like the way you do business. Maybe there's something about my face that you don't like, either. Well, there's nothing very outstanding about it, except uh, possibly the nose. That might be changed. Perhaps you'd like to try changing it. Well, uh... Anything to accommodate. Oh, 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 Say, buddy, where is this Hamilton camp? About 25 miles north. How do I get there? Follow the railroad tracks and you can't miss it. Thanks. Let's flag a load. What can I do for you? Well, if you let me out, I'll cut it. Do I look as if I'm stopping you? Anybody, I'll be letting you in on a little secret. My name is Corrigan, Bruce Corrigan. Sure, and why didn't you tell me? She's none of my luck you'll be needing if you've already got the luck of the Irish with you. And me wasting me time on you. Ah, go on with you. It's the most distressful country that ever yet was seen. Oh, they're hanging men and women for the wearing of the green. <laughs> Come 
Goodbye, Dad. So long, laddie. Never argue with a woman, big boy. You can't win. and I'll punch you right in the nose. a hat ruined by some nitwit. This is the nitwit. And here's the nose. Oh, don't hesitate because I'm a girl. Go ahead and smack it. I think it's funny, don't you? No, not a bit. I'm real proud of my nose. Well, that may be a bit shiny. Is it? What do you think you were shooting at? Uh... A deer? If I did, I made a mistake. You sound more like a big brown bear. Mm, you don't look unlike one either. Is it a habit of yours going around taking pot shots at people? It's easy to see that you're a stranger. Mm, and an excellent tenderfoot specimen. One of the finest I've seen in years. Thanks. Oh, think nothing of it. You know? The more I think of it, the more positive I am that you'd fit well in my trophy room. Oh. But, uh, well, there's a problem. I can't quite make up my mind whether you'd look better stuffed, or mounted on a plaque, or, or just a plain rug. Oh, I think you naturally favor the rug idea. Why? Well, it's be just something new in life for you to walk over. You read minds, don't you? No, but I recognize a spoiled brat when I see one. Your politeness. Well, I suppose I ought to kiss you for this. Some other time. Unfortunately, I left my snake bite kit at home. Wisecracker, too. Oh, no, not at all. Just a little girl that knows her way, even in the woods. You know, uh, you're really quite pretty enough to interest, uh, well, even me. Oh, thank you. But up here, even the animals have a habit of being particular. You know, um, poor cat is, well, always a poor cat. Oh, don't worry about that, darling. I'll make excuses for you somehow. Of all the conceited men I've met, you're the worst. Oh, a man without conceit, my dear lady, is like a woman without beauty. Nobody wants them, and neither get anywhere. I can't possibly think of all the words to tell you that I I'm think... a handsome brute. That's what the ladies call me. Handsome Bruce Corrigan. Here, look at the profile. Like it? Oh, it's a sort of uh, Don Juan and Casanova all rolled into one. Notice the features. They're rugged, firm, and masterful. Determination is written in every line. Strength and character predominate. Maybe it isn't Casanova, but it's Don Juan. You know, uh, Europe's gift. And this is my gift to you. <laughs> I guess you didn't like the Don Juan profile.
I'm going to step up production 50%? You're crazy. It's a physical impossibility. We've just lost another big contract to the Carson people because of rumors that our deliveries are uncertain. I know you're not lying down on the job, but this Hamilton company will be out of business inside of two months unless we fulfill our commitment. Well, if you'll let me pay normal wages and restore the bonus that you took away from the man, I'll more than double the trees ready for the spring drive. That's out of the question, and you know it. We put that cut into effect because we haven't shown a profit in two years. You'll have to drive them in and drive them hard. Now, you armchair executives are all alike. I've got half a crew now. I don't know how long I'll have them. That's all very well for you to say. But where am I going to get the man? You wired the National Employment Agency to send 30 men today? Well, I need 100 men. I need them now. All right, you get them up here and I'll look after my end. Goodbye. Well, who are you and what do you want? Uh, the National Agency sent me, uh, sorry is my name. Well, where's the rest? The other 29 fell by the wayside. What do you mean? Well, the, uh, the Carson Lumber Company re-signed them. More money, eh? That's it. Well, I can't blame them. Why didn't you go with them? Well, uh, I didn't fancy the face of the man that did the talking, and uh, he didn't like mine. But uh, his face looks different now. Let's see your hand. I thought so. Something, something wrong with them? Oh, they look capable enough. But if you've ever done any lumbering, it's been a long time back. Well, uh, you see, I'm, uh, I'm very careful with my hands. Uh, I wear gloves. Well, never mind the explanation. Experience and all I can use you. Thank you, sir. Oh, Dad. What is it, Joan? Dad, has the mail come yet? Uh, not yet, dear. Oh, uh, would you mind pointing that gun in another direction? <laughs> There's nothing to be afraid of. My daughter's a crack shot. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Mr. McRae, but uh, uh, she missed me. Well, be thankful she didn't take a second shot. Oh, she did. She missed that one, too. But uh, the third one... Nice girl, her daughter. The finest in the world. Hello, Mike. Hello, oh, Anderson. Anything new? Well, here's your new crew. Crew? Why, what do you mean? Well, they shipped out 30 men, but he's the only one that survived. Carson got the rest. Oh, Corrigan, this is Anderson, camp foreman. Glad to know you. How do you do? You'll find the bunkhouse right outside. Some of the boys will show you where to store your stuff. Thanks. Well, Mac, they're certainly making it tougher for us all the time. Within 45 days, I'll have enough timber on the way to the mills to fill every order in our books. How are you going to operate? On air? I guess it'll have to be on faith. That's all John Hamilton and I had when we came in here 37 years ago. Oh, cheer up, Mac. Things could be worse. We'll pull out of it somehow. I hope so. Bunk you're hunting for, matey. There's one up here. Thanks. Kinky's the name, but they calls me Kinky. Oh, hiya, Kinky. Corrigan's my handle. Okay. Make yourself at home. What there is of it. <laughs> Thanks. Say, what's happened to your bedding? Oh, I... Uh, I lost it on the way in. Right, Governor. How about you and me making a trade? Trade? Yes. You needs a blanket and I like uh, now half a mo, half a mo, half a mo. Now here, here we has a genuine Christstock blanket. Imported directly from England. Double length, double white, in softest snow. A hundred percent all wool guaranteed. And it's a bargain in any bloke's money, if you ask me. 
How much wool did you say? <laughs> well, perhaps I did stretch it a bit. Eighty percent. How much? All right, all right, Gabney, you win. It's half and half. But it's still a bargain, even if I did stretch it a bit. And I'll throw in me bank. <laughs> you made yourself a trade, Sherlock. OK, Governor. But the name's Kinky. Here's your blanket. Here's your shirt. OK. <laughs> Just about fits me. Oh, do you know, uh, I got a lot of influence around here. So if there's anything you want, just let me know and I'll get it for you. Well, uh, come to think of it, there is something you can do for me. Oh, what is it? Have my breakfast served in bed in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Governor, you win the game. <laughs> Sunday for me, Ling. No catching for you, but I'm catching pleasant for Mr. Culligan. What's in it? Search me. Trouble? Yes. Looks very much like it might be heart trouble. Sorry, that's too bad. Egg? What did you trade for? Aye. Now off a mo, Kinky, off a mo. Gaze upon the only egg of its kind in captivity. It spells dreams, moonlit nights, quarrels, dark hair, blue eyes, inviting lips, romance. Come on, what am I bid? No trade, Governor. There never was an egg like that. <laughs> Here's the Blue Wing crew. Come on, let's hurry. You sits first, eats first in this here monkey house. Right with you. You ain't gonna try and hatch it, are you, Governor? Well, uh, maybe I will. Come, catch em, come, catch em, club, come, catch em, club, all the lady, all the lady. All already! Say, you ain't our farmy, are you, Governor? <laughs> Let's see. Now, come on, Governor, don't dawdle. It's up to it. Governor? Uh, no. Oh, I forgot to tell you. It's he who grabs first, eats first in this here monkey house. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm afraid you're right. Them potatoes are sour. Put it all right. Grub's rotten. And I, for one, ain't eating it. Me come, my lady, 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 my I say shut up. Listen here, yellow man. I just about stood enough for your monkey shine. Me quick. Me no work no more. Me brother, he work his cousin come. He catch you forty five dollar. Ling catch you thirty dollar. Ling no work no more. Ling quit. Listen here, Confucius. I don't mind you quitting. No kicking about your pain. But when you speak the name of Carson in my kitchen, you treading on this black girl's toes. Now I'll get going easy like with that roast before. Hey, look what they're feeding us. Tame meat, it's leather. Hey, Anderson, what are you going to do about this? Why, dogs get fed. Why, they wouldn't feed this to the dogs at the Carson camp. I know, boy. Have a talk with McGray and see what can be done about it. I can't see what you fellas are complaining about. This food's as good as any other camp I've been at. Well, it ain't my idea of food, and I ain't afraid to say what I think. And another thing, I... Brother, you'd better change your trend of thought. 
else we's gonna have hash for breakfast, and I ain't gonna have to go out this room to get it. <laughs> then old man Hamilton died, and things ain't been the same around here since. Why Dumbling. But why? Oh, I don't know. Why, if, uh, Here, yeah, if that there blinking moon was to sing songs to him, they'd still grab for It's a nice moon, eh, Kinky? Well, yes, and no. Kinky, did uh, you ever study the face of the lady in the moon? Lady? You're off a moment, Governor. She ain't no lady. That's a man. Oh, no. I'm afraid your education has been sadly neglected. It's a woman, definitely. Her face reminds me of someone I know. Oh, she's a beautiful creature. She lives among the moonbeams, reclines on her throne, looking down on us poor mortals. That's so. Look at her hair. It's like bronze. And her face is like a cameo. Here, yeah, come off it, mate. You ain't trying to pull my leg, are you? Oh, no. You know, if, if one could get close enough to her without freezing to death, one might discover a pair of lovely blue eyes. Her lips might be found warm, enticing, possibly kissable. I would, mate. I'm afraid you'd find an awful big man. But look, she's got a speck on her nose. If I could get close enough to it, I'd wipe it off. Say, you must have perishing good eyesight. Or are you dreaming? Yeah, I guess that's it, Kate. And that's the trouble with dreams. One always awakens to find that it's just a lot of baloney. Well, <laughs> <laughs> if I might say so, mighty, it didn't take long for that there blooming egg to hatch. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of balloons. Sarah? Yes, honey child? Sarah, have I got a big mouth? No. I don't think you talk so much. Why? Oh, I don't know. What's the trouble, honey child? I know you think I'm silly, but... Sarah, have you ever felt like you wanted to walk in the moonbeam? Or fly high up in the clouds like a bird? <laughs> sure enough, honey child. I was always that way, especially this time of the year. But my man's in jail for chicken trouble. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> no, it ain't, honey. I had the satisfaction of knowing he's safe and sound from the chickens with and without feathers. <laughs>
enjoying the scenery? Yes, very pretty. Maybe you'd like to buy the place. Well, I wish I... Oh, sorry, I was, I was just... Uh, I'm not interested. Get this on and start rigging. Yes. I say, Miss Bent. I have my doubts about the tail assembly. Who told you you were a rigger? You did. I never said I could rig. You men get back to your work. There's nothing you can do here. Go on. You're lucky you didn't get killed. <laughs> I guess it's just the Corrigan luck. We have an old habit of living to a ripe old age. There's a lot of habits that might prove unhealthy in this neck of the woods, Corrigan. Now, what could they be, Mr. Anderson? Talking too much is one bad habit, and not minding your own business is another one. You'd better stay on the ground for the rest of the day and buck a saw with Kincaid here. Stay on the ground. I wonder if he's getting sarcastic. Ooh. Here, grab over the end of this here saw. This is better than I fly in. <laughs> I take it Anderson hasn't a very good sense of humor, Nicky. I wasn't raised to be a gentleman. I could tell you a lot of things Anderson hasn't got. I take it you have very little respect for the guardian of the Hamilton interests, old boy. And not only me, mate. There ain't a man in this here camp I wouldn't like to pin into a buzzsaw. Like they does in the movie. <laughs> Something more than a fugitive laws bed. You have a couple of cracked ribs. It's the nurse and sick bay for you, matey. Nurse? Yes. Miss June. And a right good and she is, too. Ribs or no ribs, I'd hang before I'd let that girl put her hands on me. Hurts more in the front than it does in the back. Excellent. Did you go to school to learn to do this sort of thing? Yes, I guess you did go to school to learn to do this sort of thing. Jasmine. Hold it. She talks. Now we're getting somewhere. Christmas night. I have it. L'amour de Mademoiselle June. Mm -hmm. No, Monsieur. The disgust of Mademoiselle. Pardon me. There's one thing I am positive about, though. Really? The lady in the moon had a pair of lovely blue eyes. And as for her lips, they were meant for only one purpose. This. Not 
too much whip. That was just about right. Why, it's only out of the goodness of me heart that I'm parting with the rod at all. How did you come to get your hands on it? I traded it with a friend of mine. Batiste is his name. He's a swell bloke. You ought to meet him. Where is he in camp? No, Anderson won't have him round. They don't need it off. How much are you holding the rod for? I ain't holding it, Governor. I wants to sell it. Twenty-five dollars, now. Can't go wrong. How much? Well, uh, fifteen dollars. And I'll throw in the kit. Now, it's a bargain in any bloke's man, if you ask me. Can you take rest? Why not? It's as good as money up here. Well... Kinky? You're a robber, but... You've made a deal. Competition, huh? You flatter yourself. What bait are you using? Uh, Royal Coachman or uh, eggs? Just a few polite manners. The fish here happen to be particular. Educated trout? No, just naturally intelligent. Which means you probably have better luck in the pool above. They're not so particular. Gas house trout. Follow me. I follow you perfectly, but uh, from the way you're fishing, I'm afraid the trout are going to find it a little difficult. Or, uh, do you have uh, flying fish up here by any chance? I don't require any assistance, thank you. Okay, no hard feelings. <laughs> Well, let me see if you can do any better, smarty. It's a cinch you could if you took your foot off your line. <laughs> Just a minute to me. Maybe you're in the wrong pool, or uh, maybe if you tried smiling, it would uh, change your luck. That's impossible with you around. You know, as, uh, as Ning Poo says, he who fisheth in silence catcheth fish, not insults. Well, I think you got something there. Well, don't stand there like a dummy. Come and help me. That's right. Come to find Come to the old man. Oh. Holy smoke, he... He got away. Perhaps a five-pounder. You're a fine fisherman. Well, you know, uh, educated trout. I'm only positive of one thing, Governor. I'm going to get a drink. Ah! The snake! 
Tying up a big outfit like the Hamilton Company takes time. That's what the holler's about, time. They're still cutting timber, aren't they? Oh, don't worry. None of it will ever be shipped. I'm looking out for myself. You're not by any chance forgetting the Carson people, are you? No, I got more sense than that. Inside a fortnight, Carson will have what he wants, and we'll have what we want. Carson's bearing down on me, so remember that excuses won't do you any good. You can count on me. Well, I hope so. if you don't mind. I'll have a half an hour, please. All right, well, bring me a scotch and soda, will you? <laughs> How am I doing, mate? <laughs> well, let's tackle the other end. Yes, come on. Me? me? You heard me. I never said a word. What's his name? Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> That's my thing. I must remember that method. Now, what are you going to have to drink? Well, I'll have a... What are you going to drink? Come on, Alf. A little recognition, if you don't mind. Or a drink. Thanks. Say, uh, Kinky, what does one and one make? Look here, Governor. I'm trying to get a drink and you're asking me riddles. One and one makes two. No, it makes trouble. Well, you brought it here, so pick it out for yourself, thanks. Would you like a peanut? Good. Have a little service here. Did you expect to use this? Well, what's wrong with it? I got orders to take no Hamilton brass. Here, yeah, that brothers, I brass ain't no good here. Hey, what's the matter? I've been using Amateur Brass here for 14 years. Have you gone balmy, or is this place exclusive for Carson's men? It ain't for the likes of you, so get away from this bar. Yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute, Alf. I'm a peaceful bloke. I don't want to have any argument with you. My tip is with the mugs what owns this here pub. Well, here comes Mac now. He'll straighten this up. All right. What's the meaning of this? Since when has the Hamilton brass been refused? I got orders this morning. You serve the men what they want. I'll pay for it with my own personal check. Oh, all right. All right. Yeah. Sorry, but your check's no good either. Well, you know me, don't you? Sure. But orders is orders. Miss what about it, McRae? Who's going to pay for our drinks? I'm sorry, men, but you'll have to wait till the bank opens Monday. I work for my money, and what do I get? Nothing but useless brass. Hi, matey. How'd you like to make a trade? I'll give you a shilling on the dollar. Well, I'm quitting right now. I ain't working for a lot of promises. I know where I can get a job. Who's going with me? I, uh, wait a minute, Red. Quiet down, men. You all know that Mike's word is good. We can't drink words. Come on, let's go. If they want to quit, let them quit. Replace those men before tomorrow morning. Well, that's next to impossible. When this news gets out, the company's credit will be ruined. You'll never get any men. He's office tougher. I know, so there's plenty of blokes. You do? Yes. But they ate the side of Anderson. Can you get him? Well, we can try. Say, Mac. Yeah? Kinky here knows where he can get a crew. What you do? Yes, I know plenty of jacks what still believes in your governor. If it's that gang of lumberjacks I fired, we don't want them around. Yeah, never mind that now. It's men we want. Here, see what you and Kinky can do. I'm offering full pay and a bonus. Now get going. Full time? Yeah. Come on, Kinky. Oh. Forget about Anderson firing you. It's a new deal up at the Hamilton camp. McCray wants you back. He's offering top pay and a full bonus. Now listen, boys, you know McCray's words as good as his barn. He practically helped build this country. He's one of you. Well, what do you say, boys? Mm-mm. Come on, Governor. 
I might have known we wouldn't be able to pick up a crew here what's willing to fight. What did you say? I was just talking to my friend here. I heard you in the first place. If it's a fight you want, I'll accommodate you. No, Irish, I've known you for 15 years. I don't want you to accommodate me. I don't want to fight. That's better. But I know where there's liable to be one. Why didn't she say so in the first place? <laughs> That's the stuff. Come on. Come on. we've had for a month. How did you do it, son? Just a little friendly competition. Look. What, smoking again, are you? And me tent cross behind that far down? What do you want me to do? Lose my shirt? Come on, let's go. Irish in the Smoky Heads versus Corrigan in this gas house gang from New York. <laughs> Good work, lad. Give it up. <laughs> All right. Back. Come in. Something wrong? There's plenty wrong. Look at that donkey engine back there. That's in your department, ain't it, Fred? Yes. And you run the logging engine, don't you, Bart? Yeah. Well, things are not falling or rolling enough around here to suit me. I get you. All right. I can't believe that Corrigan's the cause of these accidents. There can be no doubt about it. All this trouble started right after he brought back the men I had fired. You know where he is now? Yeah, in the bunkhouse. Telling the men to demand a refund of the wages they lost during the cut. Corrigan claims you pocketed the difference. How'd you know that? He started his spiel as soon as he thought I was out of the way. I'd hate to think that I'd misjudged him. But if I have, I... He's a crook, and you know it. He's been taking a cut out of our wages, and we won't stand for it. Get up. Get out of here and back to the Carson camp where you came from. Now listen to me, all of you. There's one thing I'm going to get through your thick heads, and if I can't talk it in, I'll pound it in. Anybody doubts my word, just step forward, and I'll accommodate you. That's more like it. Right now, McCray's digging down in his own pocket to give you top wages and a bonus. Well, 
What's the trouble here, Corrigan? There seems to be quite an argument going on, Chief, that I think you should settle. Well, fire away. What is it? I've been given to understand that the boys seem to think everything isn't above board. Some of them believe you've been drawing full wages for them and pocketing the difference. You want me to answer that? Yes. You're making a mistake, Governor. Now, you keep out of this. I'm not talking to you. Corrigan, for your own benefit, don't let me find you around here in the morning. It's a dirty trick, if you ask me, Governor. Thanks, Kinky. The cry must have gone off his napper. Remember me telling you that one and one spelled trouble? Yes. Well, this is it. Sorry I hit you at our first meeting, but I had to to make things look good. Why didn't you tip me or Anderson off when you got up here? Orders from Carson. And what I saw for myself. Saw for yourself? Once before I told you I didn't like the way you did business, and it still goes. Listen, I see you and Anderson at the loggers' roost. A few minutes later, the argument starts over the Hamilton brass. That wasn't smart. Nobody knows that Anderson and I are working together. How do you know? You take too much for granted. You gotta give the Hamilton outfit credit for having some brains. Here, look. Come in there and hand you this letter. Do you question it? No. You take it at its face value. Anybody could have grabbed a piece of this stationery and typed it. You're too careless. What do you think Carson would say if he knew what was going on here? You gotta snap out of it. Get on your toes. This isn't child's play. That uh, map up there cover the whole country over here? Yes. Hamilton Holdings, too? Everything within 50 miles of here. Well, let's see. This is the Horseshoe River, isn't it? Yes, it's the dividing line between the Hamilton property and ours. See this northeast section of the Hamilton Holdings? That's the plum we're interested in. What do you figure on doing? I want you to send every available man you've got in there to log it. We don't own it yet. It'll only be a matter of a few days before we will. We're taking over the Hamilton contracts and filling their owners with their own timber. I'm glad we're on Carson's side of the fence. When do we start? Right away. Send the crews in and tell the foreman to ride the men. We've got about three weeks to cut 15 million feet. Okay.
There you are, Corrigan. Fine. By the end of the week, we'd have nearly six million feet cut ready for delivery. Have you heard from Lester yet? Why? Well, the boys are beefing about the grub and the living quarters. Tell them to cheer up. Uh, I'll make it worth their while. They're restless. They want to get to town. Well, I'm going in to see Lester this afternoon, and uh, maybe I'll bring you back a relief crew. Thanks. The boys will sure be glad to see him. Hello, Lester. Oh, hello, Corrigan. Any word from uh, Carson? No. Just getting out the monthly report today. Good. Tell him we cut nearly six million feet up in the Hamilton Northeast section. That's one item you'll enjoy reading. Yeah. Oh, uh, what's the news from Anderson? Just got in myself. Been busy up at Hamilton, Camp 4. What are we doing up there? Things have been going too slow to suit me, so I stepped in to speed them up myself. Well, uh, accomplish anything? Yeah, you know that timber that they're figuring on shipping? Yeah. They ain't shipping. Well, uh, how are we going to stop them? Fire. Four o'clock this afternoon, up she goes. Well, that's all right, isn't it? I never did like the way you did business. <laughs> None of your business. I haven't time to argue with you. Where is he? Fishing. Listen, you half-baked nitwit. This is important. You understand? Important. Anything you say couldn't possibly be important. Well, if your old man's timber going up in flames isn't important, I don't know what is. Now, where is he? The whole camp were on fire. I still wouldn't believe you. June, listen. I know you think I'm against your father, but please believe me when I tell you I just found out that the Carson outfit is going to set fire to his timber to prevent him from making delivery. Now, where is he? He's at Camp 4, if that's what you want to know. Camp 4? Yes. That's where the fire is going to break out. do no good up there. Your father's going to be all right. Oh, Sarah. Yes, honey. Here, boys. Here, boys. We're getting all this stuff away. Quick. Clean it right up. Quick, boys. Oh, oh, where are the bags? Never clue and can't pipe into our left. The wind's with us. Quick. Right off. Here's the line, boys. Too hot for us up on the ridge. We've got to take the fire there, or all our cut timber will go up with it. But it's as hot as 80s, Governor. You can't go up there. Well, I've got to. You and Anna to keep this back, fire boy. Here, get back to it. I'll try to work right on through here. Come on, get that fire break through. We'll have the fire off.
Well, job, Anderson. What are you driving at? Hey! Oh. Me, Governor. Where's Matt? He's over there on the ridge. I didn't get wise to Anderson before this happened. You're not licked yet, Mac. Oh, yes, I am. I was depending on that two million feet of timber that went up in flames. Cheer up. I know where the six million feet of cut timber, number one stuff. I? You do? Yeah, I maneuver the cost and outfit into cutting it. It's up on your northeast property, waiting to be shipped. Fine. Well, what's the matter? Oh, that's no good. It'll take three weeks to lay rails up there. You still have the river in tubs, haven't you? Right. That's the answer. Let's get going. Come on. Hey, boys, hey, boys. Corrigan with the relief crew. Thank <laughs> you. 
Put it there, son. It was a whale of a fight while it lasted. <laughs> if old John Hamilton were here, he'd be proud of you. John Hamilton? Yes. You and John are like two peas in a pod when it comes to a fight. <laughs> there was only one other man in the world who had this gesture. <laughs> Your father. <laughs> and did he like a fight? <laughs> <laughs> I'll say he did. So do you. And so does your daughter. Say, that gives me an idea. Excuse me. Gaze upon the only egg of its kind in captivity. It spelt dreams, moonlit nights, quarrels, dark hair, blue eyes, inviting lips. <laughs>